listen, this this is a, a, a kind of a a, a long um, long gestation idea. It's one of those things we've been thinking about for quite a while. Um, probably about three years, three and a half years ago, in earnest, we we we, we got stuck into it. Um, found an ideal site in the town, went through a planning process, all of that kind of stuff. Then about two years ago, you know, realised that that's to build a much bigger distillery and realised that that was going to take a little bit longer than we anticipated, but yet we were keen to kind of get up and running. And our whole vision is to bring to the world from our hometown the finest, most highly regarded Irish spirits. So we, yeah. there was a food festival in our hometown um, around this time of the year, and I think it was 2017, and we sort of said, right, we're going to launch a product at this next year, 2018. And, you know, we reached kind of the springtime of the year and said, OK, it's not going to be in our main distillery premises. <laughs> we had a couple of choices. Do we subcontract out or actually could we do it ourselves? We had some equipment ordered. And literally, we found an old butcher shop across the road uh, was vacant. And uh, in, in the space of about three months, put a distillery together in there um, from, from, from start to finish. So, um, okay. and, and, you know, so that allowed us then to go ahead and launch our slingshot the still Irish gene product at the um the food fair locally which was, was a massive event and we had a big marquee with hundreds of locals and all this so it was a really good kind of kick off to it um, and we've been kind of distilling away there working away there for the last couple of years right and, and the bigger picture is that uh, long-term distillery to have a, a premises of your own to distill well into the future and just maybe on the on the the timeline for that and and uh, how you see that developing yeah so the timeline for that is we would anticipate by um we'd hope by q1 of next year we'd be we'd be getting stuck into that in earnest and you know we're engineers behind it all process engineers and all kinds of stuff so we, we have the capability internally to pull it together very very quickly um and we have a lot of the elements in place already equipment order design done builder appointed all that stuff so it, it, probably sometime kind of end of next year q1 of 2022 we'd, we'd hope to be kind of laying down our first own stock if you like and that's a, that's our own stock of whiskey in our own distillery on the shores of lockery uh, which is a fantastic fantastic location we think we're certainly one of the best located distilleries in ireland both from the point of view of the scenic location but also in terms of been very accessible from any part of Ireland. So a, a measure of that is uh, Centre Parks, for instance, have, have located just up the road from us in Ballymahan. So they've done that because of the, the great location that it's in. So yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you just about the importance of, of localization there. You're you're from the, the area. How important is local influence on your your range, your offer, your your thinking, your people? I, I presume are all are all from the area as well. We we have we have a fully local crew working with us now in the distillery. Um, you know, we obviously know there's bits, the stuff that we don't know, so we bring in external uh, support as needed, and we have some, we have some very uh, experienced individuals uh, input and the local um, background to the products. That that has, you know, that's always been something that we've been very proud of being from where we're from and being from the area. So, in terms of maybe it's 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 time to bring in our first product and talk about it. Is uh, we are. Uh, when we, when we set, decided we were launching gin, we decided we wanted to add something new and, and exciting to the category. Um, and if you look at the local area where we're from, we're surrounded by peat bogs, and it's very much part of the, the, the culture and history of the area. So we decided to include peat as a botanical in our slingshot distilled Irish gin. And it's the only distilled spirit in the world that contains peat as a botanical. So people kind of think, oh, is that like Scotch whiskey? But no, it's actually something even more interesting than that. It's, uh, it gives a lovely earthiness and a, a slight sweetness, and it gives an amazing mouthfeel to the gin. So it's a really, really distinctive product. When people taste it, they really get that sense of it. And because of that, it's won 10 international awards. So it's, it's, it's a really fine product in terms of the liquid, and, and we've got great reception for that kind of across the world where we presented it both in to travel retail people um, last year in, in, in Cannes, but also to bartenders in, in different countries. And we're pouring in some of Ireland's finest restaurants and top-class cocktail bars. So that's the kind of premises of green. That's our slingshot. Just on the gin briefly, um, 
again, a very crowded category on a global level there. Uh, I, the question, I guess, is, is how you set yourselves apart, but clearly the ingredients have a, a lot to do about um, having a different voice out there. Yeah, I mean, the, the ingredients, I suppose, is one thing, um, but even even the name itself is a, is a kind of statement of intent for us, right? So, you know, in, in, in kind of working with the good guys in Board Bia on kind of brand strategy and down to product naming and, and, and that side of things. Um, you know, we were aware of this old story about Queen Maeve had retired to an island in Lochree and was reputedly killed by a blow from a slingshot from the Longford shore. Now, the Roscommon guys would say it was from the Roscommon shore. And if you look at that on a map, the nearest point on the shore to the island is about a kilometre away. And you're there, somebody described to me one day, ah, well, there were giants of men back then. But notwithstanding, it was still a fair old feat. And you kind of think, well, actually, there's something here in terms of what we're trying to do with a brand, because that would be pushing the boundaries of what was possible, right? And that's what we've tried to extend into our brand with Slingshot in terms of, you know, including Peter's Botanical, even the, the presentation, the packaging, all of that stuff on it is nearly like a metaphor for our brand intent is to be representative of this kind of modern, confident Ireland that we have to, we don't have a, a story about our great, great, great grandfather was distilling on the shores of Loch Ree or, you know, trying to make it about the, the Shannon water or some of these things, which, which, you know, we feel are probably a bit nebulous. So it's really, um, it's, it's, it's a genuine story. It's local and um, but it's forward looking as well. And I think just in terms of the, the, the packaging of the product, it's worth mentioning just in, in, you know, when we set about to design this, we wanted something that would be designed for, for maximum shelf standout. So it's a really, um, you know, it's a really attractive, really different bottle to a lot in the category. A lot of, a lot of gin bottles are quite short and stubby. This is a tall, elegant bottle. Um, it's got a, a beautiful blue color, which really, really stands out if it's presented properly. Um, and it's, 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 you know, it's even got a, a nice tactile finish on the bottle, if you can see there. So when the customer picks it up to look at it, they're really seeing some, this is a, this is a premium product, this is a, a top quality product. And then the quality of the actual liquid in the bottle backs that up. So they, they actually come back and buy it a second time as a, as a repeat order. And we see that in, in places where it's stopped, that people will come back again and again and, and, and repurchase, even though it is premium product, but it's, it's, it's one that people will return to. And just tell us then about the, uh, the, the Slingshot, of course, isn't the only product that you have out there. I'm just yeah. looking at the rest of the range. Yeah, so the, the, I suppose the, the, the next product, and, and, and this again is a, a statement of intent for, from our point of view, is um, the Bridge um, Irish Whiskey. And it's a series of, of Irish Whiskey releases. So basically, I'll just show, show you the bottle here. So it's, it's, it's got the Bridge on it. And the Bridge here is actually representative of the Bridge in Lanesboro. So this is hometown, thousand-year-old crossing on the River Shannon. It's got some history behind it, but also then we're bringing out, so this is a series of different releases. This one is called Tusma, so the Irish expression Tusma, Latin Hebra, so a good start is half the work. This was a, a whiskey that was finished for eight years in bourbon cask, and then we finished it for 18 months in an Anima Negra red, red wine cask from Mallorca. So it's a really exceptional whiskey, pretty much sold out at this stage, but a very good quality whiskey. And just then in terms of the presentation of the bottle, so again, you can see it's it's designed to stand out. We've taken advantage of the, the punt in the bottle here. So again, if you get light on that, it really, really jumps out from the shelf. And the other thing is that a lot of brands cover the bottle, cover the label. Um, so you can't actually see the liquid inside. So we're very much about transparency in terms of our product. All of these products are, are non-chill filtered, no coloring. Um, so each release will be a different color um of, of liquid so you, you can actually see that as you line them up beside each other so it's just about um giving kind of truth and transparency um and and, and showing the customer what, what we're about again if i if i come in on that and, and we go back to you know our discussion with poor bia our brand strategist lady and there on that um you know again transparency is is is, is one of our brand values and so we were anxious that okay, we're releasing a product. It's, it's not our, we weren't the original distiller of the product and we need to, to find a mechanism to, to inform people of that. And the, the bridge serves two purposes. Again, no more than a slingshot. It's a nod to the local, but it also 
allows us to, to create a brand story around this is a bridge to our own whiskey. So we're being fully upfront and transparent. This isn't our distilled whiskey. We've added some value to it, but it's a journey across this metaphorical bridge. Join us on this journey. We, that's the kind of mechanism we come up with was the, the bridge series, which allows us to release third party product within that and, and all with this kind of transparency that we've added value to a product distilled elsewhere. Right. And, and in terms of the, the, the series, uh, how often are you intending to, to bring these out? And, and I suppose beyond that, um, what role do you think travel retail will play for uh, the bridge, first of all, but also the wider portfolio as you go along in the months and years ahead? Yeah, so, so I think um, in relation to this, obviously, it's a little bit market dependent, but also it's dependent on the idea that the bridge will go until we have our own whiskey and then we will have a different brand which would represent that. But we would see that we will be bringing out two to three releases per year on our own initiative, on our own timescale. But we will have availability to bring out additional exclusive releases for particular customers. So we will bring out and, uh, and, and sell our own release, uh, releases according to a schedule. But if a particular customer is looking for an exclusive release of a certain type of product and we have that type of product uh, and they're the right customer, the right fit, uh, absolutely, we're, 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 we're keen to doing exclusives for, for and, and those type of products go down particularly well in certain travel retail um, settings as well. So I, I suppose there's one point there that, that Mike um, didn't touch on is, is, you know, the quality of what we release is paramount. So, you know, we have this kind of age stock of whiskey, but it's not a case of just kind of releasing it for the sake of releasing it, we'll be releasing it when it's good enough to release, right? So the cert the certain things there we have, and, and I mean, we're looking at this all the time where we're, we're sort of saying, no, let's leave that for another year, another 18 months or whatever in the finishing cast. So I, I suppose the ability to offer certain travel retail outlets an exclusive release, right? And again, it won't be large volumes, but I think therein is, is, is probably the attraction. It's to allow us to kind of establish relationships we can we can then leverage over time, leverage and build on over time. I think with the gin, it's the same kind of philosophy. It's about taking the view that, listen, this is a long-term project. So ultimately, the 10-year vision of where we're going to be is with our, with our own kind of um, whiskey product, if you like. I can't give you a name for it. We have a name, but it's, 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 it's been trademarked at the minute. Um, with, with that, um, as a kind of core product, I imagine the bridge series will probably have phased out at that stage and again, supplemented by Slingshot and by whatever other products we have in the portfolio as well. So we're, we're continually kind of um, developing. And I mean, that, that might be a good, a good kind of segue into the, the next two products. So um, we... We have a guy who does some work with us who's, who's very, very good wordsmith, and he, he's kind of got to know us over over several years. He's a long-standing friend of Mike's, anyway. But he, he came up with this phrase of uh, "God, you Clancy's, you're you're uh, you're prone to a bit of scientific inquiry. You know, you, you have this still here, and you can't kind of help yourselves but playing around with it. You know, and that that kind of led us on to the kind of next series of products, which is is called the Founder Series. So these are basically um, small batch products where we, we, we come across stuff that we think is interesting and again we've created a mechanism to allow us to put those in a bottle and put them on shelves and ascertain um, people's interest in them. Now funnily enough right so the, first, the very first one of those and I'll let Mike go into a bit more detail was, was our zesty citrus vodka um, which is here uh, so the week after we released that, it won the best Irish vodka and the Irish whiskey awards. So um, the next product, again, is actually the still Irish gin, which we only yep. released in the summer. So this is our, our, this was, I suppose, this was nearly our, our lockdown project. Um, was uh, this the, uh, actual still Irish gin, which is worth mentioning. It's the only hundred percent Irish gin, so it's made with, with Irish juniper, which is particularly rare. But we've managed to get our hands on some, which is sustainably foraged for us. Um, no, we had any in Ireland at all. Yeah, we have some in, in, in certain areas, but it's, it, it is very limited. But um, so we distilled this and we thought it was very good. Um, and actually, we, we entered it into the, the, 
the World Gin Masters with an intent that we'll bring that out at some point, but it's probably not the time with COVID and with everything else, we bring out another new product. Um, we won a, a gold medal in the World Gin Masters uh, Contemporary Gin with, with Actual. So we said, right, we, we need to turn this around and get it, get it launched before the, the medal results are announced. So we brought that out and it's, it's, it's gone down um, very well since we've brought it out. It's, um, it's a very, I suppose, juniper forward gin um, works very well in, in classic gin cocktails like martinis and gronies and things like that. So it's a very nice product and a nice little addition to our portfolio. And we're, we're proud to say it's it's the only 100% Irish gin. So. Right. It sounds like a, a trial and, and testing and cu- general curiosity is a big part of, of your makeup, I suppose, as a, as a brand company. And it's not just about building a brand. There's also a lot, a lot else behind that. Yeah, well, I think it's, you know, we're, we're, we set out to, to create um, the finest and most highly regarded Irish spirits. So it's not, we're not just a whiskey company. We're not just a gin company. We will explore avenues and bring something interesting and exciting. And, and, and that's one of the benefits of being a small producer is you can actually do something like this, turn it around quickly, be inventive. I think that's what certainly the consumer is looking for, things that are new in travel retail across the world and you can pick up the same brands but if, you, if you're walking through and you see something that's that's new and innovative, that's the one you're going to want to pick up. So our, our intent is that we are kind of a brand that will help people to, 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 to meet those customers' needs. Yeah. Um, and the same will be true of our whiskies. So, you know, we're not just going to be a, 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 a copy and paste a whiskey version of, of, of somebody else. We have some very interesting finishes that we're working on. Um, and uh, we have, you know, we, we only pick the, the best whiskey that's available. Um, so, and so, and it's the same will go through when we're, when we're distilling our own, um, and, and our core, our core whiskey product will be single pot still whiskey. Um, so the, the same ethos will kind of follow through. It's not just, we don't have to be exactly like everyone else. We'll, we'll do our own thing. Yeah. And, and just on that, I mean, clearly you're an emerging player, relatively new player in, in the game. And, uh, like others in your position, you face the challenge of being a smaller player among a lot of behemoths in the in the world spirits market. So, I mean, maybe just identify some of those challenges for us. And and at this time in particular, uh, any concerns that you know retailers are just turning to the the be- previous bestsellers, the tried and trusted names that they that they have on shelf, and how do you make your voice heard in those circumstances? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a very valid question. Um, so. Um, you know, if, if you think we've kind of come at this from a standing start, and, and I, I alluded to our vision earlier was, again, from our hometown, to bring to the world from our hometown the finest, most highly regarded Irish, Irish spirits. So how can you wave the flag as being a highly regarded Irish spirit without some validation behind it? And the validation comes in, in the form of the awards, effectively. So that's the starting point. So while we've been kind of building up that bank of validation, we've been, I suppose, learning the ropes in terms of route to market, okay? And it's absolutely a challenge. Um, but I suppose what we've seen is where we find the right outlet, it works for us. And the right partners. And the right partners. And that's, you know, you can read all the marketing books and everything else in the world. You have to do the hard work and the hard yards and, and, and the shoe leather or the virtual shoe leather these days to, to, to figure that out. So I think, um, I think it's worth mentioning as well, where we're, we are a small player and we do have relatively limited resources. So, you know, we're, we're not trying to uh, scatter gun and be everywhere. We're doing, I suppose, less markets, but doing them well. And that's our, our kind of strategy and approach. Um, so we are in, in kind of international markets. We're, we are in Germany uh, and we've, we've, been put, we've put quite a bit of effort into that um, over the last year and a half or so. And, you know, we're performing very well there and um, so that's you know that's kind of our approach where we're we will be launching in italy in the next uh, week or so we've product just just gone out there and um, and again it's working with partners that we, we we're, we're we're comfortable with and we can trust and that, that that will allow us to to grow at a pace that we can support or to do it well so our vision is not to be the biggest Irish first producer it's to be the best and produce the finest but also to be the most highly regarded so we want to be in the right places and we don't have the resources to cover every market and cover every travel retail outlet, but where we are stocked and listed, we will service those markets very well. 
and even our participation, I suppose, in the BTR this year is is to build on the relationships that that Mike formed at the event in Cannes last year around ten. With the realization that it's it's not about making the first sale; it's about making the the sales in the long term. So you know, it's a balance between, I suppose, the effort versus reward. You can't kind of scatter going everywhere. You've got to try and find the guys who are genuinely interested in you and try and progress all of those discussions. So I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. And I'm just looking ahead in the, in the bigger picture. Um, you know, what are the priorities in, in terms of influencing your growth beyond the obvious challenge today of, of, uh, of COVID-19? You know, is it retailer buy-in? Is it building consumer awareness? You know, a, a digital strategy or, you know, the, the wider economic landscape, which is a bit challenged at the moment. How do you, how do you see that the next sort of, three to five years in terms of your your pace of building and, and your ability to do that? I think people's behavior will have changed to the extent that if COVID disappeared tomorrow, they won't just revert back to the way they always were, right? What COVID probably exposed for us was we were quite reliant on the on-trade and, and less so on the off-trade. That's something we're, we're working to, to try and correct is to how do you balance the kind of balance the routes or balance the channels that you're not too heavily weighted one way versus another. So it's, it's, it's a constantly evolving uh, picture. I was going to say feast, but I think anyone in this business won't, wouldn't describe the alcohol business as a feast at the minute. So Yeah, no, um, I, don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's um, it, you know, one of the things that comes back to is that that, that question of distribution and it's, it's about building that up and, um, over time and and being able to to, to support um, those distributors in the markets that we're we're we're, we're in um, you know and so not being everywhere but doing it well and I think that's our that's our approach. Like there's probably positives in in the whole COVID thing to a certain degree. I think there's the 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 um, the premiumization end of things will probably accelerate a little bit. So I think people have uh, you know. The, the drinking having, less than be, less but better. Less. Yeah, you know, from having been locked down for several months and getting a bit more exercise and a bit less booze, they're they're probably saying, "Oh yeah, but uh, actually, I'm a few, uh, so if I'm going to spend money now. I'll actually spend it on a, a a better quality product." So I think that's more where we sit in terms of positioning versus than that than at the standard end of scale. So I think it's it's there is things working in your favor in terms of the consumer is tending to be more geared towards premium products, right? So it's a question of trying to, to find the, the marriage, if you like, to get your products <laughs> into the right channels in, in front of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and just, I suppose, a bit of crystal ball gazing, you know, once this crisis eases and, um, you know, have you a, say, three to five year plan, where would you like to be? And, and, and in that time, what would you like the reputation of the company and your brands to to be in let's say five years time because you'll have the distillery presumably up and running by then and, and some stocks laid down and you'll be you'll be building a brand our distillery will be up and running in lanesboro on the shores of lockery this year quite interestingly and you'll have noticed this yourself there's a huge amount of irish people holidaying in ireland for a change and we've seen a huge increase in numbers in visitors to lanesboro and they're very pleasantly surprised by what they find there so that has kind of validated our can we open a visitor center in Lanesborough? Will it do well? We're we're confident of that at this stage. We know, uh, based on what we've seen this summer, we know that that'll work well. And I think yeah, it's about building and continuously building our reputation as producers of the finest spirits. And people come from all over the world to visit Middleton and Bushmills because they've drank those products uh, and, and seen them on shelves all across the world. We're we're doing the same with Lockery and with, with, with Lanesburg and with our products. Interestingly, I mean, we're, we're sitting here in our gin school in Dublin, right? Slingshot Gin School. Um, I don't know, has he... Yeah, I took, yeah. yeah you, showed, you showed him some. You yeah, know, so, so the whole idea of that is, is to, um, I suppose... Prom promote our brand. Yeah, promote our brand, it. increase, and, but also to, to give people a, a kind of a, a, a physical touch point with the brand, right? And give them this kind of wow experience that they, you know, subconsciously are kind of associating. God, that was that was a good experience. Uh, the, the, you know, it, it taps into the quality of what we're about. So again, that that's been a challenge for us in terms of translating that quality that's in the bottle and that's in the packaging into a 
a, a physical experience, right? Um, but again, we 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 kind of had it honed and we were starting to get some traction just before COVID. Now we're sitting here and the thing is closed until God knows when. But it, again, it's it's a kind of a if if we're as far as we're aware, I mean, there is other gin schools, but we're probably the first people who have turned around and put a gin school in place somewhere that isn't in the home of their brand. It's back to this kind of statement of intent and looking at the the benefits that can bring to us as a brand. Fundamentally, you've got to kind of have the courage of your convictions. I think, I think even if we weren't in this business, right, our values as a family and as people would be the same. It's about trying to stick to to what you believe in right and you know gain a, a a following if you like or find find a tribe or create a tribe around that right and um you know because i i think quite frankly some brands probably out there you know if you scratch a layer or two beneath the surface you'll find it's, it's the emperor's new clothes whereas we're very conscious that we're scratch beneath the surface here and we're, we're still fully dressed, you know? So it's about staying true to that. And I think taking opportunities as they come and just just putting in the hard work. Just finally, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to the Virtual Travel Retail Expo in about 10 days time when we lay this uh, just in, in advance of that. What's uh, your message, if you have one, for potential partners out there in, in, the, in the wider industry about um, who you are and, and, and where you aim to go and, and what you can contribute to the the market out there yeah so i think I'll, i i i suppose first of all um you know we're very conscious that the world has changed dramatically since this time last year and um, and we hope that everyone is, is 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 doing well we're conscious that a lot of people have have you know have moved jobs or changed around or, or you know people are are not in the same place as last year but uh, we we kind of i suppose look forward to getting back out there to meeting people in person um, and to support our brand's growth um, and to help other people to, to build their businesses on the back of, of our brands as well. Um, and, you know, I think just to, to, to wish everyone the very best. Uh, we're up for it. We're up for a challenge. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're very much open for business with the finest Irish spirits. Uh, so our, our slingshot distilled Irish gin and our, the bridge Irish whiskey and very much products that are available and you know we're we're keen to roll them out across the world. Mm -hmm.